Landscape Artist of the Year, Season 4, Episode 3. This is a recap. If you want to watch the whole episode, you can find them somewhat on YouTube, but Season 4 is on Prime Video. This was taped back in 2018. So let's get started. And please leave a thumbs up and subscribe. The art is, is really the best part of this program. Everybody's a winner. Let's see, it's our first one up. What they started doing in this episode, which I really appreciate, is they're now showing us the artists with their submitted landscape. That's how they got judged to be on the program. Prior to this, they weren't doing that, and it was very difficult to keep track of who the different people were. So I'm appreciative that they're letting us see the artists with their work. And we get to see the great variety of work as well. That's a really big piece, isn't it? Yeah, that's a really big piece. So we have a mix. We'll have cityscapes. We'll have landscapes. So some will be urban and some will be, um, you, you know, more traditional landscape as we know it. Here's a lovely snow scene. Wow, that, that, that's the kind of um, landscape that I, I expect to see coming out of the UK. You know, when you think of John Constable and those watercolors and just this vast distance with, with hills defining space. Look at that, wow, that's, that's... Oh, and look, we even get to see the people's names as well. Actually, I wanted to bring that up because I could not get rid of the subtitles on this episode. I tried and tried, I, I rebooted my app and um, y you know, also did a tutorial to try to figure out how to get rid of it. And for some reason, it just won't let me do it. So occasionally you're going to see some t subtitles come up, which are not helpful. But in this case, I thought they were helpful. I like having the artist's names right there because then you can go on and go, you know, on your computer and Google them and see what they're up to now. Remember, as I said, this was 2018, so a lot of years have passed. And, um, you know, it's fun to see the, the, project, the trajectory of their career. This one... You know, you know how I feel about this one, right? Man, what a mess. I don't get it. But there's always something that I don't get. And uh, so if I just look at it as an abstract piece, it works for me as an abstract piece. But I, I honestly don't know what's going on there. Now this, whoa, that's, that's somebody who has been doing landscape for a long period of time. He's got really good control over the space, the composition. Wow. Yeah, kind of reminds me a little bit of, um, well, John Singer Sargent. You know, you create this tunnel, and in this case, the foliage creates this, this kind of tunnel, which gives you distance. Oh, look at that. Yeah, cityscapes are beautiful, too. They really are. Oh, God, the design of that is just fantastic. Wow, we have some really, really good painters, and we also have some weak painters. And I already know, hashtag Joe is always wrong. I'm not going to like who wins this particular episode. But that's always the case. Loch Fine is a place where they are, which is in Scotland. And the day started out extremely overcast. Look at the gray sky. There they are in their little pods. There are eight artists. Each one gets a pod to work in, which protects them somewhat from the elements. A little bit from the wind, a little bit from the rain, but uh, it looked like it was a pretty cold day. As soon as the sun is gone, if you've ever been to Scotland, it's, it's a pretty breezy place, especially right on the water. This is their view. That is going to take some invention. Now, as the day went on, that earlier morning fog dissipated somewhat, but there never was sunlight. So you really are tasked with creating atmosphere and space. And that's going to require some really good design and some good control over a neutral palette because there are very few colors here. So this is our first painting up. And that that's the judges talking there. I love the mistiness over the mountains. They said, yeah, I do too. Now, I don't know what's going on with those squares. If you look really closely, there's some sort of squares in there. I have no idea what that is. Probably has something to do with gridding, which is, you know, a compositional technique that people can use to create zones in a painting. And I, I think that's what was happening here. Now, from a distance, 
oh, I really like that. There's a lot of warmth in that painting, and it was, look at, they're, they're definitely dressed for the cold. It would have been a very cold day. Really important to have that bit of red. You need a little bit of color. Otherwise, everything is so neutral that uh, it can become uh, not, not uh, interesting at all. Uh, I have a video on my channel about um, a burning red phone booth, which, which describes why red is so um, important sometimes in a painting, which uh, Edward Hopper clearly knew. Uh, I mean, Winslow Homer, you look at a Winslow Homer watercolor and you're going to find spot of red every single time. He really uses red as a device. Now, this is the cityscape guy that I liked so much. So he created this figure. And sometimes you have to create a world that isn't there in order to have a really successful painting. And that's the thing here. In Portrait Artist of the Year, you're, you need a, a really good painting to accomplish your task, and then you also need to have a likeness. Now, that's not necessarily the case in Landscape Artist of the Year. It's more important, I think, to create atmosphere and a feeling of that day. And boy, I sure think this painting does it. This is so accurate in terms of what it looked like as, as we were watching the video of that day. I really like that. Now, the judges did not like the foreground. And I kind of understand what they're saying, but if you put your thumb up, and I'm doing it now on the screen, if you take away that foreground, you have considerably less distance. So I, I, I think it's a good device, and I think it's a diagonal, and I think that it's needed. Now, here's a, a case where I, I'm really sorry that the... Um, the subtitles are there, but I cannot get rid of them, and I don't know why. There we are again. That's more. Uh, that's a more close-up look, so we can see some of her technique and how she's blending. She's mixed some really beautiful colors. A lot of blues in her neutrals. Yeah, I think that's a really, really effective painting. I think it's a fairly big piece, too, which we'll see in a minute. Now, this is a watercolor, and you know I'm going to champion anybody who comes with watercolor because they seldom show up on this program, seldom accept it on this program, and so I'm always going to root for them. So I will root for him. I And he's a very good uh, drafts person as well. There's a lot of good drawing skills in there, too. I don't think he had the time he needed to complete the task. Now, one of the disadvantages if you're doing watercolor, too, is I, in my studio, I use a hair dryer, but uh, you're not going to have that in this case. So if it's a damp day, paint is not going to dry, and you can't put on another layer till something's dried. Now, this, the judges, I thought this was one of the best ones of the day, which tells you it's not going to win. Uh, they did not like that a boat was added. I think it was really smart to add a boat. <laughs> I think it balances the space really well. If I'm going to get really picky, I do think that the red ball buoy there is slightly distracting, only because it's so round. I just wish it was just a, a dash of paint there instead. Everything else has real lost and found edges, and that's just so defined that it, it kind of stands out a little bit in an awkward way. But boy, is that picky. Now, this is the one that I was not too th too thrilled about with the painting that she did that got her on the program, and I don't see a big difference between that one and this one today. It doesn't seem to have a sense of place. I mean, this could have been painted absolutely anywhere. Obviously, she's not really interested in color, but she seems to be very interested in texture, and you can decide if, you know, that's what really floats your boat or not. I find it looks really disorganized and dirty to me. I'm not sure what to do with that, but I tend to be pretty traditional in the kinds of painting that I like. And this this breaks out of that box, and that might be what they're looking for. There you can see it from a little further away. Now remember, the winner, the winner's painting is going to be uh, on a gallery wall, and so it's got to have impact from far away, which is very different from being in your home. Now, I understand they only had four hours to work on these today, so they can't cover a whole lot of space. This uh, this looks very painterly to me, so I, I like it. I, 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 I'm I hoping this is not the whole painting. I, I think this is a detail. I think we're going to pull back and we're going to start to see some forms that actually identify it as the place on that day as being um, Loch Fine. But, oh, we pulled away. Ooh, wow. That's, that's pretty close to being halfway between abstract and being um, anchored in, the, in reality. All right. Uh, 
they absolutely loved this. They gushed and gushed and gushed and gushed about this, which I think is a watercolor with some really lyrical line going on. They gushed so much about this that I thought, well, this will win the episode. Hashtag, guess what? It does not. No, I'm going to win the episode. So I'm not quite sure why they were so effusive, but then didn't uh, pass this person on. So there will be three semifinalists selected from the eight who participated today. And from those three, only one will go forward into the semifinals of this season. And now that's when this judging begins. We're going to see which three will be judged for the semifinals of this episode. And again, as I said, only one will be selected to go on. So we've, here they all are. Man, it must have been cold. Look at them. They're all buttoned up. Oh. That would have been, wow, when I think about it and think about, you know, how hard the paint is to manipulate when it gets cold and how, you, you know, your hands, you lose sensation in your hands. Plain air painting is, is really, really hard. You have to be pretty hardy to do it. I don't think you're going to see that many elderly people out there doing this. Um, I'm identifying with that population. All right, here's our first one who is a semifinalist. I agree with this. I, I think this is the fellow that did the painting that was so accomplished at the beginning that I compared to John Singer Sargent in terms of the, uh, the tunnel that he created in terms of space. Um, here's the watercolor. Of course, I'm going to be in favor of that. I also like the format of this because of how long and thin it is. But I don't think for a minute that this shows us what he can do. Only wait a second. I just had a thought. Ooh. His, his submitted piece to be on the program was really unfinished, too. Ooh, we're going to have to look at that in a second. All right, this is the one that they didn't like the foreground of, but I, I, I think the foreground works really well. They passed, up the one, uh, they passed up the one which had the man with the umbrella, and they passed up the one that had the two boats, which I thought both of those were pretty, pretty darn good, but... I, I don't know their reasons, and it doesn't matter. So now we go on to the final judging. The final judging, what I like the best about this part of the program is we get to see the painting that they did to be on the program, which is on the left. So they had unlimited time for that painting, and then the four-hour painting that they did today. Now, it looks to me like he that's his thing, is to leave a lot of unfinished white space. I Frankly, I don't think it works in the submitted painting love the sky on the painting on the right and you know that's what watercolor is born to do especially if you let it let it do it you, you know you have to put those those colors down and don't rub oh she's the one that did this the snowscape oh i really like her well i think i'm gonna put my am i gonna put my vote with her oh that's a tough one well I would, I would place her over the, the person we just saw, and believe me, that's a real Sophie's choice for me because, as I said, that was a watercolor, and you know I'm going to champion any watercolors that comes along. But I think these are, are better for the gallery than the... Oh, okay. Well, this is the one I would choose to go on. This is more sophisticated painting. Yeah, it's it's... It's got that balance of control and at the same time letting a certain amount of freedom go on. There's also really big muscle movements going on here. This person isn't working just from the elbow down. They're getting their whole arm involved. And he's covered a great deal of space during the short time that he had. Yeah, he looks like he could he could go the distance. The winner is... Dun, 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 dun. Let's see. The winner is... Oh, oh! Oh, 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 I didn't expect that. Oh, I thought it was going to be the last one we just saw. No, it's this one. Okay, well, I'm going to have to um, root for watercolor and see what he does in the semifinals. Again, there, I'm not opposed to this painting. There are just others that I liked better. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paint sweat, mass for value, mix for color. Let me know which one you would have chosen. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.